so for the materials uh, to make the starry night shawl we'll be needing the following materials so as for the yarn um i have charity double knit here and it is 100 acrylic and it is approximately 233 meters or 256 yards and it is 100 grams and it recommends a four millimeter crochet hook and we'll be also um, using Kismet Lollipop Twinkle Double Knitting. It's 100 grams and it is 300 meters. It is 94% acrylic and 6% metallic. It also recommends a 4 millimeter crochet hook. And the color is 22 and it's dark gray. The lot is 5084. <clears throat> so we will actually be working with two of these strands at once so with black and grey we'll be working with them together um, to create this nice um, shimmery look to this um, shawl and um, I used about five skeins of each ball of yarn I think I may have used six but I honestly can't remember um, I for some odd reason did not write down how many balls of yarn I used but I know I bought about five or six balls of yarn and um yeah i haven't gone back to go and buy some more yarn um so yeah that is it for the yarn and then for the crochet hook i'll be using an eight millimeter um corded tunisian crochet hook so this is an eight millimeter and this cord is a 50 centimeter long cord and with that, you'll be needing a tapestry needle to sew in our ends. You'll be needing a pair of scissors. And you'll also be needing a pair of tape, me uh, sorry, a tape measure to take your measurements. And also to measure um, your shawl or wrap as you go along. So let's get started with today's tutorial. As for the blocking materials um, that we'll be using... Um, so to block your materials you can either use a garment steamer which I will be using or you can um, just spray your your project with a water bottle just to dampen up the project or as I said you can use a garment steamer this is the one that I have and um, with that you'll also be needing um, some foam mats please excuse the, the kitty number foam mats it's the only foam mats that i had that could fit on my desk to show you um the ones that i normally use for blocking they are quite big and yeah they just wouldn't be able to fit on my desk and these number mats were actually the first mats i started to use when <laughs> um when i started blocking my project so yeah please excuse that and you'll also be needing some knit blockers um here is the lid of the box um in case you're wondering so these are knit blockers so these knit blockers allow you to pin a big section of your work at a time instead of using individual pins um so yeah those are the materials that we'll be using for the blocking okay so um i'll be doing um a small sample swatch just for demonstration purposes um so I have my two strands of yarn here held together. So I have my my black and my grey yarn held together. So um, we'll take our 8mm Tunisian crochet hook. And to start off, we will be making a slip knot. So to make a slip knot, you're going to wrap your, your yarn around your fingers. So you're going to hold your yarn so that your tail um is in like the front of your hand and then you're going to hold the tail end with your with your pinky and uh, middle finger or sorry your ring finger and then you will wrap your yarn around your finger once and twice and when you wrap your yarn around the second time you're going to cross over to form an x and you're going to hold that there with your pinky finger like that and then you're going to take your Tunisian crochet hook and then you are going to insert under the front loop, pick up the second loop and pull through. And then you're going to take your slip knot off your fingers and then pull your tail in and working yarn to pull tight. Okay, so for the this uh, Starry Night Shawl, we'll be working with the arrowhead stitch, 
more for the body of the for the body of the shawl will be um for the body of the shawl we'll be using the arrowhead stitch okay so to get started you're going to chain an even number of chains any even number of chains so for my pattern you will chain 52 chains if you want to make it the same size as mine so as for the measurements of the shawl the width will be 50 centimeters and the length will be 150 centimeters or however long you'd want your shawl to be so i chained 52 chains okay but for this demonstration purposes i will be chaining 30 chains okay so to chain it is yarn over pull through yarn over and 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 pull through and with tunisian crochet um you only need to chain the number of chains that you need you do not need to add um you do not need to add another chain for a turning chain so so yeah you will chain the exact number of chains that you'll need so i have done one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so far again is yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through that's 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 and 26 i think i'm actually just going to stick with 26 because i think that is a reasonable size okay so now to continue in tunisian crochet you have a, a forward pass and a return pass these two rows make up one whole row so in order to do the so in order to do the forward pass, you will insert your hook into the second chain from your hook, yarn over and pull through, and you'll keep this loop on your hook. This first loop on your hook counts as a stitch. So you're going to go into the next chain, go under that back loop, yarn over and pull through, you'll have three loops on your hook. Insert in underneath the back loop of the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, you'll have four loops on your hook. Insert into the back loop of the next chain, yarn over, pull through. Insert into the back loop of the next chain, yarn over and pull through. Insert under the back, the, the back loop of the next chain and pull through. And you'll keep repeating this until you reach the end. So you will just continue along the chains, picking up loops in each chain across and by the end of the first chain uh, sorry by the end of the first uh, forward pass you will have a total of 52 uh, 52 loops on your hook but for my sample swatch that I'm doing I will have a total of 26 Okay, so I'm nearly at the end here, so I'm just going to continue with this until I reach the end. Okay, so now I'm onto the last, sorry, I've now worked onto my last chain and this is what my work should be looking like now. You will have a lot more loops on your hook than what I have now. You would have 52 loops on your hook, but for now I have 26. Okay, so that is our forward pass done. So now we need to do our return pass. So now to do our return pass, we need to do, we need to chain one at the beginning of every return pass. We need to chain one. So we're going to yarn over and pull through the first loop to do our chain one. You have to always do the chain one at the beginning. 
Then you're just going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through the next two loops, yarn over, pull through the next two loops, yarn over and pull through the next two loops, yarn over and pull through the next two loops, yarn over and pull through the next two loops, yarn over and pull through the next two loops. And you are going to keep repeating this across your chains until you get to the end. You're just going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two, all the way across until you get to the end. Okay, then you're going to yarn over and pull through the last two loops. And this is what our work should be looking like. It should be looking like like some like a kind of like ladder of stitches if that makes any sense the horizontal bars kind of form like this ladder i don't know if you can see there but it kind of looks like a bit like a ladder so maybe if i stretch my stitches apart you can kind of see it looks a bit like a ladder yeah so what we are now going to do um is we are now going to Tunisian simple stitch over the the sorry we, we are going to Tunisian two together over the second and third stitch so we are going to insert our hook into this next uh, this next vertical bar and the next one you're going to yarn over and pull through then you're going to yarn over and then you're going to insert your hook underneath the next two vertical bars, yarn over and pull through. Then you're going to yarn over, then you're going to insert your hook underneath the next two vertical bars, yarn over and pull through. You're going to yarn over, insert your hook underneath the next two vertical bars, yarn over and pull, to, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook underneath the next two vertical bars. Yarn over and pull through two. Again, it is yarn over. Again, it is yarn over. Insert underneath the next two vertical bars. So that's one and two. And then yarn over and pull through. Again, it is yarn over. Insert underneath the next two vertical bars. One and two. Yarn over and pull through. Again, yarn over and insert your hook underneath the next two vertical bars and you will repeat this across. So you're going to yarn over, so you're going to yarn over and insert underneath the next two vertical bars, yarn over and pull through. Then you're going to yarn over, insert underneath the next two vertical bars, yarn over and pull through. Again, you're going to yarn over, insert underneath the next two vertical bars. Yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over. And then we are going to do our last Tunisian simple stitch. And then you're going to Tunisian simple stitch the last one. So you are going to insert your hook through the front and the back loop of that chain that we did at the beginning. And then just going to pull that through. So let me show that to you again. So you're going to yarn over. And then you're going to insert your hook through the side of that first chain. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through. Okay, and then you're going to do your return pass as normal. So you're going to yarn over and basically do a chain one. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And yarn over, pull through two. All the way to the end. And... You should still have the same stitch count as 52 stitches, but in my case, I will still have 26 stitches or 26 loops on my hook. Oopsie, I had uh, dropped my black yarn. Okay, there we go.
Okay, so you're going to yarn over and pull through two, 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 all the way until you get to the end. Okay, like that. So now that's what it should be looking like now for our second row. So now for the third row, it is now going to be um, a little bit different. So now what we're going to do is we're going to Tunisian simple stitch the first vertical bar. So you're going to underneath that vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, and then we'll insert our hook into this gap here, essentially doing a knit stitch. So we're going to insert our hook into that gap, yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to go underneath the next vertical bar, Tunisian simple stitch, insert into the gap, Tunisian knit stitch, insert under the front vertical bar, Tunisian simple stitch, insert into the, the gap, Tunisian knit stitch, and then underneath the next vertical bar, Tunisian knit, sorry, Tunisian simple stitch, Insert into the next gap, yarn over, pull through, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch the next, Tunisian knit stitch the next, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch. And you'll just repeat this pattern all the way across until the, the end. So it's Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch. Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch, and then knit stitch, and then you'll do your last Tunisian stitch into this chain. So you'll turn your work to face you and then you'll just insert your hook underneath those two 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 vertical bars that side then you're going to yarn over and pull through and then you're going to do your return pass as normal so you're going to chain one then you're going to yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over and pull through two and you just repeat that all the way to the end Okay, so now I've completed my return pass, and now this is what I should be looking like now. So now we are going to repeat row two again. And basically, um, the rest of this pattern is just a re repeat of row two and row three. So what we're going to do is we're going to Tunisian simple stitch two together, or the next two stitches together. So we're going to go underneath the two, the next two front loops, we're going to yarn over and pull through. And then we're going to yarn over to do our increase. Then we're going to Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches together. Then we're going to yarn over. Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches together. So it's inserting underneath the, the next two vertical bars. Yarn over and pull through. Then we're going to yarn over. Insert your hook underneath the next two vertical bars and do a Tunisian simple stitch together. Yarn over. Insert your hook underneath the next two vertical bars, yarn over and pull through, doing a Tunisian simple stitch together. Yarn over and Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches together. Yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches. Yarn over and then Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches. Yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches. Yarn over. Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches, yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches, yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches, yarn over, and then do your last Tunisian simple stitch going into that chain on the end. 
Okay, now doing our return pass, again we will chain one. Again we will chain one and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And you will repeat this all the way across until you get back to the end again or to the beginning. Whichever way you like to call it. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, so you're just going to keep on yarning over and pulling through two until you get to the end. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through the last two. Okay, so now that is what it looks like now. So now we have done like one complete set of arrowhead stitches. And that is what it looks like. Looks quite cool. So you will just repeat those two rows. Um, until you get to your desired length, which in my case is 171 centimeters, um, but you will you will um, continue working this pattern until um, until the rectangular piece of your wrap or shawl is 1.8 times your bust measurement. Okay, but I am just going to show you again. Um, I'm just going to show you again um, how to do the next two rows. Okay, so we are going Tunisian simple stitch the first stitch. So you're going to go underneath the next vertical bar, yarn over, pull through. Then your Tunisian knit stitch. Going in through the gap, yarn over, pull through. Your Tunisian simple stitch the next stitch. Then you're going to Tunisian knit, knit stitch the next stitch, or into the gap. Then you're going to Tunisian simple stitch the next stitch, Tunisian knit stitch into the gap. Tunisian simple stitch the next, Tunisian knit stitch into the next, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit stitch. Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit, Tunisian simple, Tunisian knit, Tunisian simple, Tunisian knit, Tunisian simple, Tunisian knit, and then you're going to do your last your last Tunisian stitch which is this chain on the side here then you're going to yarn over and pull through that and then again you're going to do your return pass as normal so you're going to do your chain one then you're going to yarn over pull through two 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 all the way until you get to the end. Okay, so now moving on to the next row, we are now going to Okay, so now moving on to the next um, row, we are going to Tunisian simple stitch the next two stitches together. So going underneath the next two, two vertical bars, yarn over, pull through, then we're going to yarn over. So do our increase, and then we're going to decrease the next two stitches, or doing a Tunisian simple stitch two together, yarn over, 
So knees and simple stitch the next two vertical bars together, yarn over, and then Sunesh and simple stitch the next two stitches together, yarn over, and then Sunesh and crochet the next two, sorry, Sunesh and simple stitch the next two stitches together, then you're going to yarn over, and then Sunesh and simple stitch the next two stitches together, yarn over, and then Sunesh and simple stitch the next two stitches together, yarn over, and do your Sunesh and simple stitch two together, yarn over, and then do your Tunisian simple stitch two together, yarn over, and then do your Tunisian simple stitch two together, yarn over, and then Tunisian simple stitch two together, yarn over, and then Tunisian simple stitch two stitches together. Then you're going to yarn over, and then do your last Tunisian simple stitch, so your last Tunisian stitch. And then for the return pass, you're going to yarn over and then do your chain one and then just going to yarn over and pull through two for the remaining of the return pass. Until you get back to the beginning again. So that is basically the repeat pattern um, for the arrowhead stitch. So it's just a re re repeat of row 2 and row 3. So um, row 2 is the decrease round where you um, decrease the next two stitches and then an increase, decrease, increase, decrease, increase. Or Tunisian simple stitch 2 together, yarn over, Tunisian simple stitch 2 together, yarn over. And then the third, um, then the third row is the Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit, uh, Tunisian knit stitch, Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian knit stitch. So that is basically the repeat pattern. So now you can go off and you can go and complete the, the desired length. And um, I'll come back and I'll show you how we are going to bind off because as you can see we have some um this is still like live stitches here because of it's all open stitches um so yeah you can go off and work the desired length that you need and then i'll come back and i'll show you how to finish off this row okay okay so when you are wanting to to end off your um your work um, you'd want to make sure that you end on row, um, what row was it now? Um, just getting my pattern back out. Okay, so you'd want to make sure that you end on row 2, which is the Tunisian simple stitch and knit stitch. So the knit stitch is when you go um, through the gap. Um, so you want to make sure you end on that row so that... Um, your work is kind of like there's no gaps if that makes any sense um so yeah you want to make sure that your work looks like this before you end off um okay so now that is um out of the way um now i can show you how we will end off our little sample swatch here or in this case your actual finished rectangle for the wrap um so what you want to do is we are now going to slip stitch across the top. So again, you want to end on row two, which is your Tunisian simple stitch and knit stitch row. Okay, so we are going to slip stitch across to finish off our rectangular piece. So to do your slip stitch, you'll go underneath the first vertical bar. You're going to yarn over, pull through that first loop, and then pull this first loop on your hook through the second loop. 
like that. Again, you're going to go underneath the next vertical bar, you're going to yarn over, pull through that vertical bar, then pull this loop through the loop, the loop on your hook to do another slip stitch. And you'll just repeat that all the way across, just loosely slip stitching, just loosely slip stitching your way to the other side. You don't want your stitches too tight, but you just want to insert your hook yarn over and pull through this vertical bar and the loop on your hook to do your slip stitch. So that is personally the way I like to do my slip stitches. I find that's a lot easier. So you would insert your hook underneath the vertical bar, then you'll yarn over and twist your hook. Then you'll twist your hook down. You'll twist your hook down and then pull your hook through those two loops to do your slip stitch. Again, it is insert underneath the vertical bar, yarn over, twist your hook down, and insert your, and then, sorry, pull through, pull through those two loops on your hook. Insert underneath the next vertical bar, yarn over, and twist your hook down and pull through those two loops. And you'll just repeat this all the way across, doing slip stitches all the way to the end, making sure that your slip stitches are nice and loose. Okay, so you'll just repeat this all the way around, all the way to the end. Okay, again, ensuring that you're going to this last Tunisian simple stitch, going underneath those two loops of the chain, and then doing your slip stitch. Okay, so now that is what our little sample swatch should be looking like now if I just zoom out a little bit okay so now this is what it should be looking like now that is what our little bond off should be looking like yeah isn't it nice and pretty okay so now um you would snip your yarn at the end of your your rectangle um but because I need as much of this yarn as possible because I still need to finish up my little rectangular piece not so so yeah, I'm going to need this yarn, so I'm not going to snip off my thread um, or my yarn. Um, but yeah, so you'd snip off your yarn and then you'll, you'll block your rectangle. Um, so you'll need blocking mats, your your knit blockers and your garment steamer. Or if you're going to um, wet block it, you can get a spray bottle and wet your, uh, and wet your garments. Um, when I get to that process, I will show you... Um, I'll show you how to block. Okay, um, so yeah, that is it for the body of the of the shawl. I will come back and I'll show you how to block and then how to do the sleeves. Okay. Okay. So once you have finished your big rectangular piece, um, like I have done now, um, you are now wanting to uh, sew in all of your tail ends, including uh, tail ends where we've joined um, new yarn and things like that you just want to neaten up the shawl or the wrap now um, before we block so that our what would you call it so that our tail ends can be also blocked in the process that way when we block it it kind of um, the blocking would ensure that the if tail ends are weaved in properly, the blocking should ensure that it is um, blocked into place as well, kind of thing. Okay, so I've just threaded my darning needle. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn to the back. So you have the arrow, the arrowhead stitch on the front, and then you have this bumpy texture on the back. So what you're going to do is. You're just going to weave your, your yarn needle in and out through these, these bumps in a diagonal manner. Just a few times going back and forth, ensuring that, that it is sewn in a few times. Yeah, and 
And once you're happy with that, you can snip your yarn. So you can snip your yarn and then you can sew in any other tail ends that you might have um, once you have from when you have joined um, your yarns together. So you just will you, you just want to do this to all of your tail ends before we start blocking. Okay. So you can go off and you can do the rest of your tail ends and then I will come back and I'll show you what to do for the blocking. Okay. Okay, there you go. So you can just repeat that for the rest of the tail ends on your shawl or wrap. So you can do that for all the other tail ends. And then I'll show you what to do for the blocking.
and now for the reveal. So if you would like watching that tutorial on how to crochet the starry knot shawl, then please like, comment and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. I'm really, really aiming for 1,000 subscribers and um, yeah, it would really, really help. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and enjoy the rest of your crocheting.